Hi, welcome to another episode of Don't Panic Geocaching. My name is Aryan and I go by Waterfan5 on the geocaching.com website. This video is all going to be about colors and how colors can be used in geocaching puzzles and mystery caches. With coordinates, of course, it's all about numbers. And so what you need to look for is how colors that you see, maybe as text, maybe as part of a picture, or maybe by symbols that are associated, how they can be converted to numbers. And there's many different ways that can be done. And I will show you some of the more frequently used ones that you see. By far the most commonly used one is the so-called rainbow system, because it has nicely seven different layers, from red to violet, or in the US, Roy G. Biff. And so that makes it very useful to convert them to a number, where you say, oh, I need to put them in an order, and this is the order you put them in. Well, the red then needs to be the first number. Or it could be the value that red is one, orange is two, yellow is three, and so on. So other popular ones you may see are related to a uh, pool. Uh, so all the pool balls, of course, have a unique number from one to 15, but from one to eight, they are solid colors. Afterwards, they get striped. So you, you may see just simply like black, a red, and it means then eight, seven, for example. Could also be that the snooker, so that's the balls that you see right next to it. Um, there, of course, in snooker, uh, the white ball is the one you kind of like hit. So it's zero, the red ball is one, yellow is two, and so on, till the black being eight. So different colors than used in pool, but still gives you numbers that you can work with. And then the table on the right side shows the so-called electrical resistor numbers. Now they have a special uh, multiplier factor to it as well, but it's just like 10, 100, 1000, etc. But very popular in puzzles since it gives you all the numbers from 0 to 9. And so that makes it very easy to encode a coordinate or a partial coordinate by saying, oh, it's green, blue, violet, 5, 6, 7, etc. The other one I show here is the so-called primary colors. Since they don't have fixed numbers assigned, they're not often used in puzzles, but I've seen puzzles that use the primary colors, and often you can kind of give it away if it sees these unique color combinations like magenta, yellow, um, might be used in those puzzles. So it's just something to look out for. Most of the puzzles that involve colors you will use one of these. But of course, there's other more extreme variants out there as well. And let's take a look. For example, when computers just started, they only had a limited number of colors that were supported. So the Sinclair ZX Spectrum uh, only had 15 colors, and these are the 15 that they had. It was like uh, black to white, that was eight colors, and then they had kind of had lighter variants of those and then they named those pink and cyan and light green and etc. So those were just 15 colors and of course they each have individual numbers from 0 to 7 and from 7 to uh, or 8 to 15. Similar uh, regular uh, home computers, so uh, the DOS machines, they initially only started out with 15 colors as well or a 15 color palette that had um, where the main colors also had numbers. And here you see what those colors were named. Another popular uh, home computer before uh, computers became mainstream was the Commodore 64. There all the colors had numbers as well, as you can see right here. It had more colors, but the initial 16 had these numbers. And they were also on the keyboard. Note that on the keyboard, all the numbers were one higher. So it was the F1 key, which was black, and F2 was white. So when you see here zero, it could also be one, white could be two, red could be three. But again, the numbers are there. And you see kind of all of them have a unique 16 set of numbers. The numbers weren't standardized. So that meant if you take all these systems, you get quite a color variety for what a color means. But this actually can help you to figure out what system has been used. Because if you see these specific systems, then it is like, oh, I have a red, and maybe because of the way my coordinate is, red needs to be a two. Well, 
that eliminates quite a few systems and we see resistor is one where red means two. Now if we have brown in there then well it could be the Commodore 64 or still be the resistor code right so it kind of helps you eliminate maybe what system are we looking at because not every combination has every color combination that we are. Of course this is assuming that one of these systems are used right we'll see some other variants as well in a second. Colors can also be used as a cipher, kind of like an alphabetical cipher. And here you see some popular ones that are being used. Twisted pair cables, a real system that's being used for wiring, is, uh, has color combinations for their wires. And the colors kind of give, um, all have a unique number. So again, ideal for puzzles, but also something that can be converted to letters. Since we have 25 of them, almost all letters of the alphabet can be mapped to that. And then there's a few artificial invented ones, right, that you will see on the internet. And websites like uh, Cacheluth or um, Geocaching Toolbox will have the overview there. Color Honey and Col uh, Color Toki uh, have a special way of ordering the system. So they kind of like rotate around or rotate um, as like a, a bee um, hive. And so you kind of have to have a special way of reading them, uh, of how you need to look at them, so they can rotate around, and this kind of gives the mapping of what is what. So um, I'll show you the website, uh, and then we can take a look at those and uh, see what it looks like. Another popular one, because of just looks bright and cheerful and confusing, it almost looks like noise, is the HexiU, where it uses the same six colors, but just in a different order to indicate a letter. Combine a bunch of those and you get a very confusing picture, right? And then there is one that's specific towards counting. It only uses a few numbers and Q is a bit weird, but all the other ones have just more of the same. And so that doesn't have to be blocks, right? It could be anything that is, they stack different reds and different yellow things together and it all maps at the end to an alphabet. So these are just some ciphers or replacements where color combinations um, yeah, kind of represent a letter. So we saw earlier colors representing numbers, here we see color representing letters. Okay. Now let's take a look at some websites and then uh, solve some puzzles. So let's take a look at uh, Cashloof and see how it can help us. Um, it has a variety of code tables and that's what we're looking for here. So I'm going to do a few old codes to just show you the large variety. but going to open here the ones that are related to color, so that I just talked about. So the twisted pair, color code, uh, color honey, color toki. I'll open a few more that maybe I haven't talked about, but still to just show you. So and there's one more I'd like to show, the hexau thing. And I think that will give us most of the color variants. Oh, here's the resistor code as well. Why don't we take a look at that? And it should give us a good example. So let's take a look at those. So here the twisted pair. Uh, you can see the very standard uh, list here of information. So where all of them are just listed and just by number. Color code is very sim similar here. So the clutter code, where you can see the table. So if I type in a code here, um, then you can see what that would look like in the text itself. So hello world. And we can see this is what hello world look, would look like. Now remember, it's all about the counting and the color combination. So it doesn't have to be squares. It could be anything. Moving on, color honey. So as I mentioned, this is all about rotation as well. So you see here what happens is that it kind of fills the square, so but it rotates around and then it goes to the next one and then it curves this way. So it's actually quite um, difficult still to read because it's not just these colors, but the direction may change. Um, so some of them have the same colors like the F and the N. So you have to be careful to not mix them up because the rotation may make them look the same. 
as you see here. Color Talky uses the same color codes, but just stacks them slightly different, but you see that same waving that's going on, weaving that's going on here to kind of uh, yeah, make the words, and you see some examples right here. Colored squares. Um, again, this is similar like the hexiU that I'm going to show you, just uh, with slightly different colors. And here, this one is quite popular. You will see this one. If you search around for puzzles, you will find definitely this combination. And combined, it looks actually quite complicated. So if I do Hello World, for example, here, you see it gets messy really quick. Uh, and so you have to be very careful not to take the wrong letters. And then finally, the resistor codes. You see just the codes here listed, right? This is a standard table. Uh, this is an international standard. And so it's very uh, straightforward once you know the colors, which number they correspond to. OK, so as usual, I'll go over one of my own puzzles. Uh, this time it's not easy being green. I created this puzzle specifically for uh, this video. So it has some quirks, um, but that way I could demonstrate some of the things that I went over in this video. So it's a three and a half difficulty. Um, one of the reasons that it is not higher because it can play quite difficult is the GeoChecker is quite forgiving and will actually give you hints if you're one number off or one number is incorrect. So it will tell you that, uh, help you towards the solution. So uh, not a field puzzle. So we see that here as well. And not at the posted coordinates. And use the jacket to get the coordinates to the cache. So uh, again, not easy being green. Lots of hints towards green, right? So obviously green is going to be important. Furthermore, uh, we also see that N33 and West34 is a given, so we're only looking for 10 digits in this case. And then the, the certitude checker, um, looking for coordinates, so we're not looking for a keyword, always important to verify. And finally, one more thing is uh, in the hint, there is a puzzle hint as well. It says for the computers, use the internal number, not the external number. Um, I made a reference to this earlier that, for example, with the Commodore 64, it has an internal and an external number. So this avoids some confusion. However, as I mentioned, if you in the certitude checker uh, enter the wrong one, then it will give you a hint that you should use the other one. So there's quite a bit of leeway there. So obviously the image is uh, the puzzle. So let's open up the image. So zoom in a little bit. Oh, let us uh, make it bigger than that. There we go. So zoom in and we see a big N and a W, north and west. So that's good things. And if you paid attention to the video, you should see a lot of things you recognize, right? So uh, this says Sinclair on it. I talked earlier about Sinclair static spectrum. We see some twisted cables. This one is a little bit tricky. It's um, a, a beehive and a bee or a... Um, on it. So you may remember what that was. This one says CGA on it. Uh, Commodore 64. And even though the colors are off here, this is a set of pool balls and how they're typically lined up. Or sorry, snooker balls and how they're typically lined up. See a rainbow. Uh, we see a pool and we see resistors. What have, have these things all in common? Is that, well, A, they were all in the video. <laughs> But also, they also assign colors to, um, or they assign numbers to the colors. So let's take a look. Um, we need something in the around 49, and we need something around 30. Remember, the first parts were given. So let's go back. And so we had all these things. So let's take a little bit of cheat sheet here that will help us a little bit. So the Sinclair. Um, if I look up the Sinclair here, for the green, it assigns the number 4. Well, that's a good start, because we were looking for something in the 4 range. This one, let's assume we don't know that yet. Um, but yeah, it should be somewhere between 7 and 9, right? That's uh, for the coordinate. Uh, it can't be uh, 0, because it's not 50, because this one is a 4. 
It could potentially also be a 6, would still be in the radius. The CGA, well, green is a number 2, so we know it's a number 2. The Commodore 64, that's this one, so it's the number 5. I remember the external number would be the number 6, so there is some variation here, so be careful there. It could be a 5 or a 6, but since it mentions it was the internal number, we know this has to be a 5. And the last one, the snooker, was um, the number 3. So we have here partial coordinates. And the same for the other side. Twisted pair cable, so um, don't know yet, we'll have to look that up. Rainbow, well, Roy G. Biff, so um, that would be the number, um, number four, right, for green. You can see that here as well, the number four. In snooker, uh, the number green is Let's see, oh, sorry, this is pool, so it's number six. And in resistors, the number green is five. So we have a lot of the numbers already. Um, now we'll have to go bear back to our uh, twisted pair and um, whatever this is, right? Now we earlier went over uh, color honey, so the honey, honeybee. It was also the, like the little diamond, you may recognize that as well. So we can now go to Cashluth and look up the last two numbers that we're not sure about using the color honey and the twisted pair and we'll have our coordinates. So that's how this puzzle is solved. Nowadays computers of course have a lot more colors and um, as many colors as you pretty much can see with your eye, right? And these colors are typically made up out of a combination of red, green and blue for a computer. And so they all give them a number between 0 and 255, how much red, how much green, how much blue is used, and that kind of that makes out a number. Uh, that's not the only way. Colors also have names. Um, so not only paint company gives them names, but there is standards for names um, in the internet. They have kind of have names. So there's lots of names out there for colors, not just red, green, pink, but you will see a lot more variation of names. So you may see names of colors that actually represent to a unique color. You just have to find out which system to use. Is this a paint company or is this an internet standard or is it crayons or... And then of course, there's another way to identify and that is by the HSL number, which again is a three number that also go from zero to 100% in this case. So you see that here. So where red, of course is full red, 255 is the maximum, zero is the lowest would be encoded like this. In the HSL system, it would say, well, it's 100% uh, saturated, um, but the light is only 50%, and that also gives me red in this case, or the color for red. So um, yeah, let's play with that as well. And uh, it's good because sometimes you may just see a number, right? That gives us three numbers between zero and 255. That's often enough to do part of a coordinate, right? either the north or the longitude or the latitude. So we're going to play a little bit with that as well. So let's take a look at uh, uh, the actual color picker scenarios. So here's an image um, and you see every pixel has its own unique color, right? If we magnify this. Um, so it could very well be that the cast page gives you a few colors that you have to work with and you have to select the color you can use any tool. I'm using here an online tool, but um, there's also, for example, paint also does it. But this one shows you nicely all the variations. So if we have a particular color, it will show you this hex number, which of course could be converted to a decimal, which could now be a longitude or a latitude, right? So typically you would see that you would need at least two colors to uh, get a coordinate. It can also be taken apart, either to an RGB or an RGBA number. So you see actually here, this one has four numbers. But there is a lot more to this color. So if I go to this code, so um, we can see all the other information as well related to this. So it may not just simply be um, what I just talked about, but it could be the HSL, could be the coordinates, it could be any of the other systems that is used by the cache owner. And as you see, 
everything has a name, so this color has a specific name. In this case, it's called Casablanca. So if you see a puzzle and it has like two different colors, then you may want to use and analyze the colors a little bit further. Okay, um, yeah, some of the websites, of course, that uh, might be useful that have some of these color ciphers, especially that's what they're useful for, um, but also for a refresher, right? They will show the other ones as well. So yeah, that was it related to colors. Um, hopefully when you see a puzzle, puzzles that use a variety of colors, you maybe can see how rainbows can be used to order the numbers or maybe as the value itself. You could see some of the alphabetical ciphers like uh, color honey or hexau being used or how a single color with maybe the RGB code can be used for a puzzle. If you liked it, uh, please like the, the video, that way other people can find it as well. If you want to be updated uh, for future ones, please subscribe. Otherwise, if you want to contact me, you can uh, reach me on the geocaching.com website under waterfan5, or you can leave me a comment here on YouTube. Thank you very much.